Hello everyone. In this episode we are going to talk about Broadly compression. Now if you are not familiar about Broadly compression, it is just like Gzip compression but better than that. For example, Broadly can compress files 24% smaller than Gzip compression. So that's a really cool thing. So in this episode we are going to compare and contrast between Broadly, Gzip and uncompressed version of the data that is returned from a custom endpoint. So here's what we are going to do. We will create three behaviors at CloudFront and in one of the behaviors we are not compressing anything and the second one we are going to apply Gzip compression at CloudFront and the third one we are going to apply Broadly compression at the CloudFront. And then we will look at the data from a front end and we will observe the file sizes and the latency and then we'll do a comparison. Now another important thing to remember is guys this broadly compression is available at no additional cost. So without further ado let's get started. All right. So let's create a simple project. I'll make a new directory in my desktop broadly compression. And I'll open it in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. We are going to create an API, a serverless API, and we are going to have three endpoints. So one of the endpoints will return the data without compressed, and the second endpoint will return the data with Gzip compression, and the third endpoint will return the data with Broadly compression. And after that, we will compare and contrast their sizes and the latency. All right. So uh, I'll go ahead and create a folder called API. And uh, let me take a terminal and I will CD into this API folder. I increase the font size just a little bit so that you guys can see it well. And let's create a serverless project or serverless service really. So if I show you the serverless version that I have, that is 1.6.3. So to create a service, I will type serverless create dash dash template and this is going to be a Node.js template. So AWS Node.js and I hit enter. So it's created and when I open it up, we have three files, handler.js, serverless YAML where the serverless configuration uh, lies and also handler.js where the code lies for the Lambda function and the gtigno file. So I will go to serverless yaml file and let me clean up just a little bit. So I will change this service name to broadly. Save that. So now I'm going to create a function under this function section. So right now we have the sample hello function. Instead I'm going to change it to data. So this function is going to return data. So I will change the corresponding handler reference as well. So that is handler.data. That means if I go to handler file instead of hello, it should export data. So I'll go back to my serverless YAML file. Now we are going to do the compression from the cloud front, not from the Lambda function itself. Of course we can do that, but in this video we'll focus on doing the compression at the cloud front. So we will have just one function that will return the data, but at CloudFront level, we'll create three behaviors. One of the behaviors will do not compress the data and the other one do Gzip compression and the third one will do the broadly compression. Okay, in order to create these behaviors, we need to have some paths or different paths that invoke the same function. So let's create the events array. So the events array is basically we can define what events are going to invoke this lambda function. First event is a HTTP event and its path, let's call it uncompressed. And the method is a get method. Now this is an API gateway path. And I will also enable cross origin resource sharing. So next I will create another API gateway.
So let's deploy this service. I will take an integrated terminal. So I will deploy this with SLS deploy dash dash stage will create a new stage called dev and hit enter. Now it says bad indentation. Let me check. All right. So I haven't added the colon just after HTTP. Let me add that for all three events. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, this time it's working. All right, so the deployment is complete and we get three endpoints. So let's check out one of these endpoints. So let's check the uncompressed endpoint. I will click here and open it. Yes, and it is returning all our data, like, you know, 200 items. And similarly, I can click the other links as well. So it is going to return the same data. Here we go, 200 items. And I will test the other one as well broadly. So here also it is uh, returning the 200 items. So right now, all these three endpoints just return that same set of data without any compression. So as the next step, let's create a CloudFront distribution and set up GZIP and a broadly compression to the corresponding paths. So I will go to AWS console. I'll just search for CloudFront. Here we go. Click on that. And I'm going to create a new distribution. So click create distribution. And it's going to be a web distribution. Now I have to set one of the origins. So one of our origins is the API gateway. So if I go back to our endpoints, really the first part is the domain of the API gateway. So I will just click on that and I'll copy that domain part only copy go back to the cloud front and paste it in make sure it's all pasted properly and the origin ID will call it API gateway our origin supports HTTPS so let's set HTTPS only and then the rest will keep it as it is and I will click create the distribution so it's in progress so until it is been deployed I will go into that if I go to the origin section there's one of the origin defined so now it's time to create our three behaviors so I'll go to the behaviors tab and right now there's this default behavior but leave it as it is I'll click create behavior and the path pattern that I'm going to set for this is slash dev slash uncompressed so how did I derive it so let me show you the API gateway so this is the domain part, right? And this is the stage slash dev slash uncompress. So this is the part we define as our path pattern. So similarly, we'll create two other path patterns as well, but we'll first complete this one. So slash dev slash uncompressed and the origin is API gateway origin. And here the most important two configuration is the cache settings and the compressed object automatically setting. Now. This is the uncompressed behavior, so we don't want to compress anything at CloudFront. So what I will do is I will just click here and then click create new policy and we'll have a name uncompressed cache. And I'll set the TTL to one for even for the maximum one and the default one because I just want to show you how the data is being retrieved from the origin all the time in this demo. And I'm going to uncheck cache gzip object and cache broadly object both of these options because we are not going to compress anything in this endpoint that means slash dev slash uncompressed endpoint so with that i'm going to create this policy so here's the policy and i will go back to my cloud front and i will do a refresh let's see i should see it. there we go uncompressed cache select it and then i'm not going to compress anything so i will select no here that's it. I'm going to create this behavior. So similarly, I'm going to create another behavior. So this time it is dev slash, let's see, gzip. The origin is API gateway itself. But here I'm going to create another new policy. Let's say gzip cache policy. Again, I will set it for one for this demo and then at cache compressed objects options I will only check cache gzip object I will deselect this one 
so it will only gcp and send it to the front end create policy it's created i will go back to the cloud front do a refresh here let's see gcp cache policy okay and this time i have to select compressed object automatically to yes because we are compressing object at cloud front level with gcp compression okay then i'll create it and i will create the final behavior so the path pattern is dev slash broadly okay and the api gateway as origin create a new cache policy so this time let's call it broadly cache policy set the ttl to one and i will only select broadly objects and by the way you can even select both of these because if your front end let's say our browser supports both gcp and broadly then CloudFront favors the broadly compression all the time, but we'll select broadly explicitly here. And I'll then click create cache policy. Go back to my CloudFront, do a refresh here, and I should see broadly cache policy. Compress object automatically to CS, and then I'll click create. Okay, now we need to wait until this CloudFront distribution goes to deployed mode. So until such time, let's create a simple front end. By front end, I mean just HTML page. So I will just click here and type it index HTML, add a new file called that. And in VS code, I will select HTML colon file. Then it will give me some boilerplate code for the HTML. It's called compression comparison. So in the body section, I'm going to create a couple of P tags. Three paragraph tag. Under each paragraph tag, let's create a button. Our first button, and this is our second button, and this is our third button. In the first button, let's have a name called no compression. The third button, gzip, and the fourth button, broadly. So now let's attach some on-click handlers. Botly data and in the header section I will create a script tag so let's create our three functions function get uncompressed data and the other function okay I'll define the URL here the base URL const URL and we can just copy the CloudFront domain because uh, we'll be querying the CloudFront. So this is our CloudFront distribution with three behaviors. If I go to the general section, I should see the CloudFront domain right here. Let's copy this one, paste that in, add HTTPS in front of it. And let's set that dev slash path as well. So only we have to call uncompressed GC pop broadly so it should be const not cont so now I'll be using fetch to get data fetch URL and I'm going to append uncompressed path so then we get a response So dev slash uncompressed will match this path pattern and similarly it will call upon the corresponding API gateway method. So let's copy the same thing in the fetch API and I'll paste it here. I'll paste it to broadly as well. So here instead of uncompressed, this has to be gzip and this has to be broadly. Okay, looks all good. So when I click this no compression button, so it will call upon this one and it will fetch the data from this base URL slash dev slash uncompressed and then will return me the uncompressed data. If I click here, it will call upon slash gzip behavior and it will return me the gzip data and the broadly, it will return me the broadly data or the broadly compressed data. So let's try that out. I'll open the index HTML with live server. So I have that live server extension installed and here we go. These are our three buttons. And let me open inspect element and go to network tab, XHR requests. 
and let's try our no compression button there you go I clicked it and I got some data returned so let's see if I get my data there you go we have this 200 posts returned from our backend I'm going to create GC button as well okay so it also returned me the same number of data perfect and I'll click the broadly as well and here we go so it is also return me the same number of data perfect now let's observe these statistics for the uncompressed version the size that is returned from the backend is 55.5 kilobytes right? and it took 1.94 seconds but when it comes to gzip do you see uh, there's a massive size reduction so the whole size went down from 55.5 kilobyte to 7.8 kilobyte so it's a really good size reduction with gzip compression and the time has also reduced to 1.35 second and when it comes to broadly compression the size is further reduced from 7.8 kilobyte to 7.5 kilobyte and the time is also reduced to 1.34 seconds so let's try that out again And as you can see, the size reduction is more or less the same. Now, broadly compression is really good when compressing HTML file, JSON file, and CSS files. So this is what I want to show you guys. I hope this has been useful, and I'll see you in another video.